Hey guys, we're coming to you today. It's Leslie and I, and we just wanted to talk to you about the uh, Latin American Rescue House and what the vision is behind it. You know, when you think about what's going on uh, in Latin America, the problem of trafficking is not a Latin American problem. Nor an Asia problem. Nor an Asia problem, nor a U.S. problem for that matter. It's a worldwide problem. But what has to happen is in individual locations, some kind of disruption and restoration and and reintegration have to happen in a location. So we're not talking today about a Latin America problem. We're talking about a Latin American solution to a worldwide problem. And so we want to talk to you just a moment, uh, talk with each other, uh, just about the things that we've seen over 28 years when it comes to this worldwide problem of trafficking and building a solution that's local. Uh, the first thing that's part of the vision for this project is that hope disrupts. In other words, something has to break into the cycle of trafficking that happens in these girls' lives. You know, we've seen over and over that, you know, a, a lady will be trafficked and she's trying to, to, she continues in it because she has children and then those children are in it and then their children are in it. We met ladies, you know, in Asia that, four or five generations of one family are trapped in this cycle of trafficking and something has to come in and begin to disrupt that cycle. I know that from when you start learning about trafficking, anger is what you want to, and so when we think of disrupt, we think of coming in violently and taking it. But I've seen over and over again, especially in Asia, that it was kindness that disrupted it. It was someone stopping and noticing and looking and caring about the individual that disrupted. Yeah, it's amazing how um, more, much more powerful love is than mm -hmm. anger. It's true. Uh, and how much more love accomplishes than anger. And it can be simple as a kindness of providing food or helping to wash clothes, helping to clean. We've just seen those little acts of kindness of seeing people around you. The second part of that uh, Latin American uh, home vision is that hope restores. So once you've broken that cycle of poverty, then uh, coming into that, there's a restoration process. You know, these girls have been through trauma. Their trauma is unique, but yet it's similar mm -hmm. in some ways. Often people ask us, can you describe the rescue and rehabilitation project process of an individual? Uh, and it, there's similar notes to it, but it's individual as your story is individual to you and my story is individual to me. And we come in and that restoration process provides you know, counseling and uh, work on their trauma and just seeing their lives and hearts restored. And it requires lots of patience, not putting a timeline yeah. on it. You've had enough, you know, that you have to be done by this season. It's being patient and letting it humility to walk there in the process. Yeah, it seems like so often, you know, you people want to put it on a first you do this, second you do this, third you mm -hmm. do this. Uh, but it's not a formula. Restoration is not a formula. No. Restoration is a person. And it, in when that when that process begins to happen in their life, as you say, for some people, it can be almost overnight feeling, but for some people, it takes a long time of, of just struggle and, and openness and, and realness. And, you know, these are girls that are very broken mm -hmm. and have had a lot of trauma in their life. The good news is we've seen in 28 years that restoration yes. can happen and healing can happen. And, you know, we have girls that we'll sit around a table with in Asia and you can't tell that they're any different from our daughters. And each of them have such a unique story. Each of their, even the time frame is very unique, but restoration happened, so. Yeah, and then I guess the third part of that vision for uh, this particular project would be that love, uh, hope, sorry, hope connects. Yes. You know, that there's a, a, a connecting and, you know, one of the things that puts girls at risk, one of the things that traffickers prey on is isolation. Uh, mm -hmm. As long as a child is isolated, they are vulnerable. And so you somehow have to create community for them, not only community in the healing process, but a community of people that rally around them in that process. You know, as parents, we've um, 
experienced when the community's helped in the process with our kids, when they've seen something in our children, a gift or a calling, and they've surrounded them and helped to encourage that. And it's no different in this process. It does take, we can't do it alone. It takes all of us coming together and offering our gifts. And sometimes you don't feel like you have anything to give and all of a sudden you're their answer. We had one friend who's a lawyer who was visiting and she knew she could do law. She was visiting with us in Asia and all of a sudden she was able to start fanning a flame of a dream and a desire. And one of the young ladies who was being in the process of being rescued and that was a tremendous meeting, but she had no idea that she had that gift to give at that moment. And, and really this is where you come into this process uh, is this building community is you know, God is calling a bunch of us to do this together. Yes. And so, like Leslie said, it's not possible to do apart from a large group of people mm -hmm. doing it. There is a large group of people that are participating on the bad side of this thing, that are participating in the destruction of young girls' lives. And we're here to hopefully call together a large group of people to come around this Latin American problem and help create love and a solution and hope. So it's really important that hope connects and you're a big part of that connection. Uh, I think the last part of that vision is that hope builds. Uh, you know, it's not just uh, a rescue and a, a rehabilitation and then they sit. You know, it's a rescue and a rehabilitation because there's something for them to do. Uh, there, there's something that, they're, they have unique gifting, they have unique calling. And I think there's a re-establishment of their dreams that happens. They have been torn down by life. They've been torn down and to watch that process of slowly building them back up where they have skills, they have a reason to live. They have a reason to be part of the community. Um, they're not a burden. There is a place for them and a, a purpose for them. Yeah, you know, they become functioning, contributing members of the community. Uh, one of the things we're excited about in this Latin American project is uh, in this particular context, uh, beauty is such an industry mm -hmm. that is in high demand and actually girls can make a great living wage at. Okay. And so we've had some people from that industry that have stepped into this community with us and they're helping us to build a solution uh, so that girls can get trained so that they can actually make a living so that there's never that threat if they go through a hard time and they have children that that's the only way they can make money that's a lie and we need to break that lie and build in them sustainability and self-sufficiency mm -hmm. and we see that happening here and even the the couple that have stepped in to help build that side of the re restoration and young ladies lives they didn't sit around thinking oh we could do this they were just cutting hair and said, what do we have to offer? And then it hit them. We could help teach cutting hair. That's really fun to me to see the variety of gifts, variety of talents that it takes. You know, so often this segment of society is left out of society planning. Mm -hmm. So if you ever see a, 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 a city that lays out a vision for its citizens, there's never a vision for this group of people. Yeah. And so I think that what's happening is, is there's an emphasis now that says these people are just as important as everyone else. And we need to include them in a vision for the community. And, you know, you may feel left out of the community building process. And what we want you to know today is that, that you are a vital part of what happens and what can happen and God can use mm -hmm. your unique gifting and calling who you are to really build restoration and sustainability in a girl's life. Yes. You know, even we've seen as we've walked in Asia, dreaming, when the girls start dreaming again for the future, that's such a healing yeah. for them. And I look forward to these girls dreaming for the future again. Yeah. And you know, it builds a testimony and that's what we're hoping to do here is build a testimony where lives mm -hmm. that have been extremely broken find healing and health and then bring healing and health to somebody else's life. Yes. So not only are they recipients of it, but they become givers of it. And we've seen that. So we know that that's gonna happen here. And you know, we're excited to see that process come yeah. to completion. 
you know, human trafficking is a huge issue and sometimes we feel like there's not much we can do. And we want to say, yes, there is. We can all work together and be part of the answer. Nobody has all the solutions. Yes. Really. Nobody does, right? Yeah. No, we're constantly amazed. We, we'll step into situations where we certainly don't have the answers mm -hmm. for, and then all of a sudden people will start showing up in our lives, yes. will come across our path, and they have an integral part of yes. something they know how to do, and they have that one piece, and it's added into everything else. So what I'm saying to you is don't be afraid to add your piece. Jump into the, the boat, and let's begin to oar in a, a direction that brings healing, health, and restoration to girls.